In the previous video, we successfully installed a view project onto our system. In this video, let us learn about the setup and reactive references. So in the introductory video, we briefly touched over the concept of composition API. We have a second way of writing our view components. All the previous syntax that we are familiar with is still valid. Now the composition API is an optional syntax which you can use. Now the question that must come in our minds is that when should we use the composition API? And this I have already discussed in one of the previous videos. Now the first case is in which you can use the composition API is when your component code file is too large and you want to organize your code by features. The second one is when you want to reuse same code across different components. Now to appreciate the benefits of composition API, let us take an example component that I will define using the regular syntax that view2 offers and then we will refactor the same code using composition API. So let us clean this first. So if you are familiar with the anatomy of a regular view component, so first we need to define the template tag and within it let us define a div tag. So and here let us define an h1 tag hello and right down below we need to define the script where we will define the business logic for our view component so here we say export default and an object that we export now if you are familiar with view 2 here we need to set up our data method that returns an object with a data property say name which we will directly interpolate in the template. So name, set this to the nerdy dev and let us go right inside the template and right within the h1 tag, let us interpolate it like this. So name, now head over to the terminal and to run our project, let us say npm run serve to spin a local development server. So now our project is running on localhost 8080. Let us give this a preview in the browser. Hello the nerdy dev is getting rendered in the browser. Now let us transform this very simple example to make use of the new composition API. So let me comment the entire code that we wrote and let us see the composition API in action. Now the entire thing starts with the setup method. So first we need to say export default and then we need to define our code inside this curly braces. So we need to define our setup method. And this setup method that we write executes before the data, methods, computed properties and lifecycle methods that we define within a component. So essentially it is the first thing that gets executed. Also the setup method doesn't have access to the this keyword. So the code that we write here is going to look a lot different. Let us break the concept piece by piece so we understand it a bit better. So this setup method that we define can optionally have props as the first argument. Now the props is something that you are familiar with. It is a mechanism using which a parent component passes data to its child components. Now this props thing is reactive and is something that can be watched or monitored. Now to understand this, let us write some code in our hello world.view component and pass a prop of age to this hello world component from the app component. So right inside the template in the app component, we can say hello world and let us import it right inside the script. Import hello world from add slash components hello world. Now we need to register it right inside our object. So components hello world like this. Now let us pass a prop of age to the hello world component. So to pass a prop, we can use the V bind or we can use a shorthand by saying colon H and set this to a value of 12. So now we are funneling this H prop down to the hello world component. So let us go right inside the hello world component and accept this prop. So let me clear this up. And here we will receive a prop which will be H and it is of type number. So let us interpolate the age right here. And since this is optional, we can omit this. And also we can remove the name because we are not using it at the moment. So let us give this a preview in the browser. So now you can see we are getting hello and 12, which is the age that we passed as a prop to the hello world component. 
Next, the setup method can also take a second optional argument, which is called as the context. So the first one is props. Second one is context. Now these both are optional arguments. So we will use them when we require them. Now using this context argument, we will now be able to access all the properties that we used to previously access using the this keyword. So let me remove this. Now let us see how we can define our name property using the alternative syntax that the composition API exposes. So with view 3, we can make use of something called as reactive references to define these. So let us head over to view docs. So here we are. So you can see right here, we first need to import ref from view. Then in order to define a reactive property, we can use the ref method that takes in an argument. And what it does is that ref takes the argument and returns it wrapped within an object with a value property. So it gives us a value property and sets this value property to the argument that we provide in the ref method, which in this case is zero. So if you want to access the value zero, you can say counter which gives us the object and to get the value, you can say counter dot value. So counter gives us the object with the value property to get this value, which we supplied as the argument to the ref method, we can say counter dot value. So in the example, you can see it shows a counter variable being defined using the ref method to which it passes a value zero. Now this ref method spits out an object with the value property and sets the past argument as a value to this value property. So if you log counter, it gives us the wrapped object. And if you want the value that you provided, you will have to say counter dot value. Next, if you want to mutate the value of this reactive property, you will again have to access it in the similar manner. So to increment it by one, you will have to say counter dot value plus plus. So let us see this in action in our code. Now the very first step is to import a ref from view. So right down here, let us say import ref from view and let us go down below and within our script method let us define the reactive reference for our name variable that we will interpolate just like we did in case of regular component syntax when we had defined the name property in the data method so const name and then we can say ref and let us give it an initial value of the nerdy div so this will give something like this value colon the nerdy div. Let me comment this out and let us interpolate the name variable in the template. Name like this. So just with this code, what view does is, is that it wraps a primitive, which is a string into an object as I just discussed and it allows us to track changes. Now in the regular syntax, we were using the data method that was wrapping our primitives into an object. Lastly, we just need to return the variables and functions that our template will require to render them. So return, currently we have only names, so name, wrap it inside curly braces. And this is how we make our code more maintainable. Now let us give this a preview in the browser. So you can see we are getting hello the nerdy dev and the age is coming from the hello world component. Now let me show you one more thing before we wrap up with this video. Let us go right inside the hello world dot view file and inside here let us import the watch method from view and within our script let us define the setup method for this component and this can take on the optional argument props. Now let us log the age prop whenever the age prop changes, right? So to do that, we just have to pass a function here to the watch method that we just imported right above. So let us pass an anonymous function and it will get triggered whenever there is a change in props. So let us log console.log props.h like this. And let us put a comma here. So let us give this a preview in the browser. So you can see a value of 12 is getting logged in the console. Now let us try changing our age prop to see if this function gets triggered again or not. So right inside the app.view component, let us change the value of prop to say 15 and go back to the browser. So now you can see we are getting 15 being rendered in the browser and the new value is 15. So this was all I wanted to cover in this video. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel 
and let's catch up in the very next one.